Good afternoon. You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show. After Maryland's trip to Indiana, where it didn't go so well for the Terps today, I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. Mason, a 27 to 11 loss, but for a while it felt like it was anybody's game. What'd you see out there? Yeah, bang. Well, not really banged up, but COVID protocol Terps team just didn't have it together. I think that's a good way to put it. A lot of penalties, a lot of errors. Uh, you can put it on whatever you want to, but at the end of the day, not not a good quality control. I'll use that word because it seems to be used more and more in football. Not a good quality control performance. No. Uh, the turnovers, the uh, disjointed play on offense, it was almost there. For most mm -hmm. of the first half, it was almost there. A step away one way or the other. Second half, Terps just did not have it. Indiana takes control. Uh, for most of that game, you're still thinking that if you win the game and you can beat Michigan and you can beat Rutgers, we have a chance to go to the Big Ten Championship, maybe end up at the Rose Bowl. And then that second half, mm, just didn't happen. Uh, Leah was off a little bit all day. What did you see in their quarterbacking for the Terps? He was rattled. It it didn't look right, and, and it didn't look right in a lot of ways. The the first one was, I'm not sure why Maryland went away from the slant routes over the middle, especially with pressure coming up, uh, double A-gap pressure coming up the middle from Indiana. And then it just seemed like a lack of sequenced play calling. And you see it all over Twitter that Leah's out of process. You know, everyone's out of process. I, I think it, it's not only the quarterback, but – it was the whole team down to the coaching staff. They're not calling the game the same way they do when things are working early. And this team has about seven good plays. Out of that, they don't seem to come up with many, um, I'm not really sure what you want, unpredictable kind of grab out of your hat plays. They just aren't there for Maryland. The Jackler's Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. It started with a mispass to Demas in the right corner of the, all, of the uh, end zone. Comes back a little bit later, throws it a step or two behind. It looked like for a bit he was trying to throw the ball too hard, it too hard a grip on the right. ball. Then he takes a little bit off and it's behind. Mm -hmm. Then he's aiming it. It's high, it's low. And then when the ball does get there, there are a few drops mixed in. Overall, uh, the offensive line did well enough for being just thrown together right. out of COVID. The receiving core pretty much played the same three guys all day. Mm -hmm. uh, you missed Rack Jarrett. You missed Jay Sean Jones. So a lot of it goes to Demas. Uh, they didn't come back to Cobbs much. Jay Sean Jones uh, was missed. So you have Daryl Jones, the other Jones, 21 yeah. in there. A couple passes seemed to get through his hands. It just just didn't, didn't come together. Penny Boone at tailback looked powerful. Yeah, it looked powerful, but I, I think he can really use that year in the strength and conditioning program or the offseason in, in there. Um, the thing that you got to look at from this team is just the miscues. I mean, you have a quarterback that's struggling, and then his receiver drops a first down pass. And then uh, a guy breaks open, and the quarterback throws the ball behind him, and it's an interception. They needed one of those plays to go their way uh, while it was still a game. And then I'm not exactly sure what went on in that safety play. I mean, they run a read option of the shotgun. and Given that there are teams all over the world at this point that run plays out of the shotgun and, and one or on their one-yard line situations, but Maryland's a team that's lined up in a straight eye formation this year. It just seemed like they were – that they're lacking. When things go wrong, they don't respond well. And, and I saw it on Twitter from one of the strength and conditioning coaches that you will be faced with adversity, and it's up to you whether you beat it or not. And that's the end result. And today they didn't beat it, and they lost. Good enough defense, even though they were down a few linebackers. Wow, they, they really had Penix, Michael Penix, who was known as a gunslinger. What was he, two for 13 at one point for 39 yards? He never really heats up, 
but Indiana pulls out the, as they kept calling on TV, the single wing, the direct snap. It wasn't overly effective for great yardage, but boy, when they needed a yard or two, it was there. Uh, Scott takes over as a quarterback, whereas yeah. number eight gets us three touchdowns. Anything unusual about that? I wouldn't say it's unusual. I mean, the Terps were missing what I think Ace Ely, who's one of their more important players, but at linebacker. Yeah, they're just not quite there yet. They're not a team that's going to beat you man-on-man on, man on the defensive line. We've talked about it. They've changed their scheme for those guys just to kind of eat blocks and let Chance Campbell and Ruben Hippolyte and Ely and, and Gote kind of fly through and make the tackles. No Gote today either. Yeah, and, and that's – you're going to get two yards against that. It's you're not going to get 10. You're not going to get 12. Uh, carry. I was impressed. You know, and this is a really tough game to judge because of how many guys were out, especially in your offense. But – the fact they were in the game and they were really in it, you know, they didn't give up. They kept fighting. And, and that's when you look at it, they got a garbage time touchdown, but at least they did, you know, you're looking at a team for years now that would have just folded in this game and lost probably 41 to three. Right. Uh, defensive backfield for missing Nick cross. You saw a lot of now wearing 14. Isaiah Hazel was a wide receiver last year or 85 or 82, 82, 82. Uh, no Tarheeb Still, who was my defensive MVP up until then, a freshman corner who was mm-hmm. shutting people down, a unit that was just getting ripped, comes out and plays man-to-man against Wapfilia, uh, Fry Fogel, Hendershot. These guys have been tearing up the Big Ten, and for about 45 minutes had them pretty well shut down. I think they did the whole game. You know, If your offense didn't continuously shoot themselves in the foot, you really would have had it, but that kind of goes back to what I was just saying. The fight, the aggression, I mean, all the things that they've done right these last few games were still there. And when you go back and film this week and you look at this game, it's probably one where you're going to say, we really should have won that game. Our defense gave us every chance. The thing that was supposed to be our weakness this year allowed us opportunities to win, and we just didn't deliver on it. And I'm not sure how you look at that over a team. I mean, that's that's why these guys are paid money, is to go back look at this and take away whatever positives you can and get ready for a team that you're playing in Michigan next week that's flat out bad at this point. Lost to Penn State. Well, a few days of the year, I get to root for Michigan and they lose. Not rooting for Michigan next week. Oh, and you're going to look at a game where hopefully you'll get some of your guys back and you got to bring it again. I think that's that's what I look at in this week from this entire staff, from strength and conditioning to the guys, you know, the support staff is – you did a lot of things right. Well, let's replicate that and, and fix the little things and get the win. Because when you listen to these guys speak, so much of what they had issue with last year was the preparation, the lack of fight, and all that has seemingly been adjusted right. to a much better situation this year. Let's see. Next week's a big kind of judgment week, to put it in Bruce terms, uh, for this program of how you can put together a win that, again, you can stick it on your resume because, hey, you beat Michigan in football. That's still a big deal regardless of how bad they are. And I'd give you at least a three win, which is half of your games. Mm-hmm. You, you can get to a four win season here. I don't know if they're going to end up playing that crossover game in the Big Ten, which was the uh, the extra week mm-hmm. with all the COVID that's going on out there. In closing, uh, there's not that much positive to say when you get really got beat today, and you help you beat yourself a little bit, and then Indiana took care of the rest. But the thing that you said about the fight after watching for years and years and years. That uh uh-oh moment when it got to 20 and they got to 27, like, oh, well, this thing's just over. And for once, they didn't stop. Maryland scores on the last possession. Yeah, you're right, it's garbage time. But the guys who were just getting, everything was going wrong, still come back and score that touchdown. There are a lot of positives out of a loss, but it would have been a lot easier had uh, played just a little bit better, could have won the game. so happy Thanksgiving to everybody. It's it's still a good season. Maryland still beat Penn State. I don't care how bad Penn State is. Maryland still beat Penn State this year. Um, to go for 30 seconds on basketball, anything jump out of you after two wins? Yeah, I think they don't really have a big man. We'll talk more about this on the Young Terps podcast, but it's going to be a tough year looking around this conference, looking at who some of the best players are for the Terps to guard some of them. Uh, back to football really quickly. Again, I think the next game is just a big test. You may have a team for once and I think a long time that can easily beat teams that they are better than. And then 
that's a huge step forward from where we were at one point. And in these next two weeks are going to be that. You are talent-wise, I think, better than both Michigan and Rutgers. And you're going to see what this offense can do because right now you have a team that looks fantastic when they play against teams that are hurting and, and has frankly looked really bad against teams that are healthy and, and kind of well-oiled machines this year. And two, what I think is fantastic coaching jobs by Tom Allen and Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern in Indiana. Uh, you just got to put it together and pick up the pieces and keep moving and hopefully um, see a better product on the field next week with more of our guys back. Well, good afternoon. And I do thank Meyer Consulting Engineers of Rockville, of course, Viner Four Gates, your hometown Terps IT team, and the big dog himself, Rick Jacklich. And you've been listening to the Big Dog Post Game Show here on the Terp Talk Network. We will see you after the Michigan game, hopefully a Maryland win. Good afternoon.